Hello everyone and welcome to how to navigate your Nitrato panel. My fellow gamers, you may play Ark, or you may play Minecraft, or you may play a whole number of games that are available to play on online servers, and that is why you're interested in a Nitrato server. That's why today we're going to make understanding the Nitrato panel as easy as possible, and everything that you need to know about it. Locating your Nitrato server panel. The first thing that you'll need to do is head into our website, of course, and you're going to notice in the top right a yellow login button. A new pop-up will appear, and here's where you'll log in with your information. Or you can also register if you have not already registered. Either process is relatively simple, and all you need to do is fill out the information that is applicable. Once you have completely filled out your account login info, you're going to hit the yellow login button, and that'll set you up with the page logged in. In the drop-down bar where login used to be, under your username, you're going to scroll down to My Services. Once you've located that, select it. In this new page, you'll see any servers that you currently own available to you. Of course, most of the time you'll only have one, but given that this is the Nitrato content channel, we have a few. Find the server that you have paid for, and for quickest access, hit the gears on the side of that server. Then you'll be taken to your dashboard. From here, we're going to get into a lot of detail on what each individual section is. So, let's get started. Understanding the Dashboard the dashboard is essentially your home page. This is where you'll find pretty much everything that is basic and need to know. That includes things such as the server name, the IP address, the current map, your player list, and more. If you scroll just a bit down, you'll see the resource usage area, where you can see if there are any weird anomalies with your server. Typically, there shouldn't be. A bit farther down, you'll see a bunch of different keywords, phrases, numbers, passwords, and things of the sort. All this stuff is is essentially the port that you'll need to put on the IP address at the end, as well as FTP credentials if you use programs such as FileZilla. Something to keep in mind is that depending on the game, your dashboard may look a bit different, but nothing should change significantly. Understanding your panel tools. As we continue to go down the list here, we're going to be looking to the left-hand side where we see the information section. As I mentioned, we'll be going pretty in depth on what most of these things are so that you don't have to worry about trying to understand it later down the road. Click the event log button and wait for the page to load. Here is where you'll see any sort of events that your server has done. This can be things like starting your server, stopping your server, restarting your server, or even if the Nitrato staff helps you, you can see the events that happen there too. Just below event log, you'll see log files. This is where you'll find the log files supported by the game server, and that allows you to review things that are more in-game based. Typically, this won't be too full unless there is something wrong with the server. And then you'll see things like crash logs. Moving on from here, though, we're going to go to the left-hand side and check out the server check button. Select that, and in the new page that pops up, what you'll see is a built-in tool that allows your server to scan for any errors that your configuration might have. If there's nothing here, it means that your server is running just fine. Next on our list is the settings section, and this is where you'll probably spend the most time if you're trying to do things with your server. What I mean here is if you're going to try to adjust the difficulty, or change the map, or things of that nature, this is where you'll spend your time. For example, using the search bar at the top, you can see different types of settings all over this page. As well as if you're not sure what you're looking for, you can always just scroll down on the right hand side and check out every sort of setting that is available here. The next section is the expert settings. And to be honest, the expert settings is not all that different from the regular settings. It's just a little bit more coded rather than clicking buttons, if that makes sense. It is in this section where you'll be able to make more precise changes to your server rather than simply just clicking between yes or no or higher or lower difficulties or things of that sort. Next is the mod and workshop section under settings, and this is also where you'll probably spend most of your time if you're making changes to the server. 
Here you can see where you have already installed mods, as well as adding mods directly from the website, which is just the coolest thing in my opinion. All it takes is clicking on the mod that you want that is currently available, and it'll automatically add it for you upon the restart of the server. And all it takes is simply deleting the mod ID number to remove it. Next is configuration profiles, which simply put, restores the game back to its previous files at that time. Finally, in this section, there is the cross arc or networking depending on the game you're playing. This allows you to connect multiple servers together all at once. The final box, called the toolbox, opens up with player control. Here's where you can ban, unban, or even whitelist players. Next is the file browser. This is not unlike a client-side file browser where you're adding mods to different sections. This is just the server way to do it. Here's where you can check out different mods, you can alter different settings in the actual files. It's a great thing to get yourself familiarized with. Next is the backup management. What this does is restore backups to a previous version of the server more than just the previous server profile. So don't worry if your files get corrupted for some reason or your server breaks, there will be a backup of the save file for you. Last but not least in our toolbox section, there is automated tasks. This is where you can set automated tasks to run or just observe the ones that automatically do. There's also the help bar in which you can find many different questions that are frequently asked and hopefully you can find the answer you need there too. Next is the upgrade downgrade section in which you can upgrade your server if you want. Things like total RAM or player count. And then there is the reinstall button, which is a last ditch effort in case something is seriously wrong with your server. This is a reset all button for whatever game you're playing. Use with caution. Finally, there's Switch Game, in which you can choose between the numerous amounts of games that we offer here at Nitrato. As you scroll down the list, you might find one that surprises you. Conclusion. Well, that covers just about everything that you need to know about the Nitrato panel and the dashboard, as well as other things too. When you're playing games like these, it's definitely helpful to know your way around. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe, and ringing that notification bell, so that way we know this is the type of content that you like to see. Until next time! Huh. Huh.